So I finally got my bed set up and I'm in a park and I'm comfortable and I'm eating some of these little snacks. I paid my bills, my, you know, first of the month bills and, you know, answered my Patreon and Discord. I mean, just did normal things. I feel so much better. I think the big thing is this kind of a life is about simplicity, about figuring out what is really important in the sense of not many levels, but specifically I'm talking about things. What things do you need? Will you actually need every day? Survive and also enjoy life. Like sitting here, I'm actually lounging. Lounging here, having a snack, getting a little bit of work done with Koali Bear right here, with the park and there's birds singing outside and it's all lovely. I mean, this is, this is like being on vacation, except this is my life. This is my life now. For a while, I'm gonna just be in town. I need to get this all set, figured out and settled, like literally how I'm gonna do things. I've realized that all my plans for cooking, including the food that I cook, may not work out because this cooler, when I checked the temperature, it said 58, because I have a thermometer in there. I'm like, 58 is not a safe food temperature. So the food that's in here, which is not very much, it's a very small cooler. Uh, I may not have put enough ice in there, which doesn't surprise me because I kind of was like having a freak out at the time I was putting the stuff in. It was, it was literally the last thing I did and I was so done. Some people walking by. Um, so I may end up needing to throw all that stuff out. People walk right by my car because I'm in the shade and they want to be in the shade, which I understand because it's just starting to get warm. So I might have to throw this all out because I sure as heck am not eating mayonnaise that got 58 degrees all night. I think it's part of it's not having enough ice and part of it is all uh, not putting it in the ice correctly. And part of it is because it's so hot, you know, it's so warm, um, even in the middle of the night. And what I'm thinking is for the next week or two, I'm going to have like the most simple eating. So I will probably still eat eggs for breakfast. I'm going to really try that because I really like eggs for breakfast. But then for second breakfast, lunch, and dinner, you know, sandwiches, salads, wraps, stuff on crackers, you know, like tuna fish on crackers, like just the most simple cold meals. Number one, it's summer. Right now it's like incredibly hot. So it makes sense to keep things, to have a lot of cold meals. Um, and, and also it's, I need to figure out how the, the most simple way to eat and, and live and then build from there. And then I can always add more complexity. I don't want to start out complex and then have a nervous breakdown. I actually, since I'm was totally not set up and I think my food might be bad. I actually got a sandwich at Safeway that was terrible. I didn't realize that the pre-prepared sandwiches have no mayonnaise or mustard or any sort of anything on them and they don't come with anything. Like they don't have like little packets or something. And I'm just like, so it was a dry sandwich. It was, it was very unsatisfying. I mean, it was better than nothing. And I was happy to eat a sandwich, but sandwich with no mayonnaise, mustard, hummus, pesto, something is just, that's just terrible. I also got a little, one of those little tuna packets where it's like tuna and a crackers and mayonnaise. So at least I can get some mayonnaise and I can have that a little later if I want. And then later today, I want to get a salad. I'm thinking like for dinner or whatever, I'll go, I'll get a salad somewhere, maybe also at the grocery store. Um, and then one of the things I may do maybe today, but probably tomorrow is figure out what's going on with this cooler and then change over to different foods. So ha get, you know, some lunch meat, some, um, pre-cooked chicken salad, you know, stuff like sandwich things. I have some buns. They're completely smashed. They got stuffed in between things. I have tortillas, but they're really old. They were in my fridge, so they haven't gone bad, but they might go bad at any time when it's going to be, you know, 99 degrees today. Right now it's like 78 or 80. It's lovely. The reason this is so hot is because there's no wind. Like I was just like, why does it feel so hot? Like last night it was like in the seventies. It should have been nice. 
but it was terrible. And I realized it's because the air was stagnant. So it's like you were, you, I'd open the windows and I, yeah, I'd have a fan or whatever, but there wasn't really a breeze coming in to exchange the air. So that's, that's why this feels so bad here in the bears. There's no wind. All right. Anyway, I'm going to chill out some more. And then whenever it gets too hot, I will go to a library and be in the air conditioning. And when I do that, I'll probably get some work done. So it's 95 degrees. I am in my car. I'm actually in by a library, so which makes it really helpful because I can go in there and go to the bathroom. I also can go in there and fill up my water whenever I need to. I'm so tired because I didn't really sleep last night. So I was in the library and it was actually too quiet for me. I kept falling asleep sitting, like, sitting there watching stuff or doing stuff. And I'm so tired I can't really work or do financial things or so I'm just, I decided it made more sense for me to spend this time adapting to the heat. So I have my water bottle. This is just water. I got this actually for washing dishes and now it has become my spray bottle for spraying myself, which is amazing. So good, so good to do that. And I'm in the shade, obviously. Um, my back window isn't, which is why it has a covering on. There's actually a, a little bit of a breeze now, which is huge, huge difference compared to last night. Last night and this morning, it was like still. And having a breeze, even at 95 degrees, feels less than the 93 degrees yesterday with no breeze. Huge difference. So anyway, I'm just watching YouTube videos and chilling because the thing is, I'm so tired. It's a bit too hot for me to clear out all this stuff. I just, I'm, I don't have the energy to clear out all this stuff and lay down in my bed. I can lay in my bed now, but I just, I'm just tired. So I'm just adapting to the heat. And I think that will make it so if I can stay not overheated, I think tonight I'll be able to sleep. That's my hope. I'm so tired. I don't know if I'm gonna drive back to the part of town that I s slept in last night or I'm gonna try to stay around here. We'll see how I feel. Hey, it's Elizabeth Off Grid. So much better today. This is day two of living in my car. The second full day, the second night. I actually slept. I know this looks like a mess a little bit right now, but it's because my food stuff is out. I'm gonna reorganize my food. Um, but I actually slept in my bed. I used my CPAP, my mouth guard, all the things, took my medicine, you know, like had my, all my things I do. Now I brushed my teeth at the park, but I ended up needing to eat after that because my blood sugar, it wasn't low, but it was low for me to go to bed. You know what I mean? So I was worried about it in the middle of the night. So I had some applesauce and some pretzels. So that wasn't very effective, but, um, but I will figure something out with that. I, brushing my teeth before bed, I really want to have like a tiny little sink situation in here. I wish I could have actually installed a real sink, but I, I want like a little basin. And I have some bigger basins that I use when I'm camping to like do real dishes, but I don't want something like that. I want like something like, like this big. I have a collapsible silicone bowl and I don't know where it is. It's in one of my storage units or maybe it's in the trunk. It's somewhere. I think it's in, I think it's in my 10 by 10 storage unit. Another fun update is I accidentally put all my underwear in my storage unit, so I'm not wearing underwear right now. So that's fun, because um, I didn't have any clean underwear. After I took my shower, I was like, great, that's lovely, which I, it really bothers me. However, my storage unit is, on, is not open today until 10, so I will get it sometime during the day today. I might actually go to my, I have some underwear at this one, some underwear at this, the 10 by 10, some of the underwear at five by five. I might go to the 10 by 10 because the traffic around here in this area has already started, even though it's like nine something in the morning. I also redid my cooler. So I took out all the old food that I don't believe was food safe. I kept the eggs because I think the eggs are fun. Um, but I took out all the meat stuff and the mayonnaise. I'm not messing with mayonnaise. But by the way, I've had food poisoning from a potato salad that was in my car too long after the grocery store because I didn't put, I had like run other errands or something and it was a hot day. I definitely do not, do not want food poisoning generally and I sure as heck do not want it when I live in a car. I mean, it is so, so miserable and it's a gastro thing. So not having a toilet 
really is a problem. I actually think I would probably get a motel room because I would need to have a toilet. Um, but so I'm definitely not wanting food poisoning. So I repacked my entire cooler with new ice, new food. And along with that, I've actually decided to spend this first week eating incredibly simple. I'm going to try to get to a point where I can make a hot breakfast. I still have those eggs and everything, but which I, I'm not, my idea is that since it's so hot, I don't want to cook during the day. Breakfast is different because um, it's not hot yet. And I want to keep things simple. So I'm going to start out just this week, just making a hot breakfast, which I have not done yet. This morning I went to McDonald's for breakfast, had a McDonald's coffee and, um, which I just get a black coffee. The lady behind me got eight sugars and eight cre creamers. And I'm like, that is a lot. Now, maybe she got a really large coffee. I got like a, you know, a small coffee, McDonald's small, which is smaller than a Starbucks tall. I was in, in Australia and we went to a Starbucks in Sydney. They have an actual small size that's smaller than tall. That's actually the right size of coffee. But we, of course, Americans have to have everything in gigantuan sizes. I don't know if they still have it, but they've changed, but um, that's how it was when I went, to, went there 20 years ago. Okay, back to topic. I'm reorganizing my food today, which is why the food cup is all out here. Because yesterday, I like I said, I did my blood sugar and it was like 100. And that, I, I don't want to be, that's not low, 70 is low. But that's lower than I want to be when I go to bed. Because then it will go lower over the night, you know. And I actually think because it's super hot, I'm, actually I don't think, I know. Because it's super hot, I'm not really actually eating enough food. Which creates a problem because you need energy to cool yourself down. So it's kind of a circular problem. So I'm going to make sure I get out snacks like nuts and things that are calorically dense for me to eat. I can't eat peanut butter, which I could, but I can't eat peanut butter when it's hot. But I think I could eat like my cashews. I think that would work. Um, and other snacks, I, I also got rye bread because I smashed all my bread. It, they're, like I had buns. So I got some rye bread. I feel like the, I'm not saying you can't smash rye bread, but I feel like this is less smashable than buns. And also, this is many slices. I don't know how many slices this is. One, including these, 14. So about 14 slices, so it's seven full sandwiches that I get a sandwich that's this big. So that's actually very, pretty cost effective um, as far as like kind of fancier bread goes. And I actually really like this. And I think I'll be able to eat it even if it's hot outside. I also got lunch meat that's like, instead of getting like chicken, or you know and like actual pieces of chicken i just went and got lunch meat lunch meat is not cost effective even inexpensive lunch meat is not cost effective it's actually better to buy a pre-cooked chicken however pre-cooked chicken i have to cut up and everything and i'm making things as easy as possible i have tons of salad toppings in here so it'll be easy for me to make a nice salad and i'll just put some of the lunch meat on it and that will be my dinner salad when it's hot instead of buying mayonnaise or mustard or whatever for my sandwich i'm just going to put the salad dressing on my sandwich that you know the idea is i'm trying to make things really simple really simple i got caesar dressing and i also got some parmesan cheese like literally the shaker parmesan cheese that has cellulose on it but i just wanted simple 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 which include means you're going to have a bit of convenience food so today is a Sunday. There's crazy traffic already because it's so hot and everyone's going to the beach. So I'm gonna try to avoid all that. The park is busy kind of in a different part of the park, but where I'm at, there's literally nobody in this parking lot so far, which is lovely. So I kind of have it to myself. There's absolutely no wind. It is the leaves and the trees are not blowing at all, which makes, it's like only 77 or 78 degrees, but it feels a lot hotter than that because there's no wind. I have my door open just to kind of create a little bit of more air in here. I'm not 100% sure where I'm going to go today. I will want to spend some time in air conditioning this afternoon. I'm especially finding that late afternoon is the hardest. It's one thing to be out in the heat for a couple hours, but for like six or seven hours, yeah, we'll see. Sundays are harder because library, some libraries aren't open, some libraries, but generally speaking, most libraries open for a shorter period of time. The one that's actually closest to where I'm at right now is that open longer, but there's all the traffic, so I'm not not going to deal with that. Where I'm at right now, I'm not going to be stuck in the traffic because I'm at the edge of where the traffic is, and I can just go the opposite way. Of it. There's a number of things that I haven't figured out, so or I haven't really restarted yet. I'm not taking my vitamins yet. I actually don't know where they are, so I have to find my vitamins and start taking them. Obviously, I need to go get up to where. 
in one of my storage places. I think my iPad is also in one of my storage places and I would like that, but that's not a big deal. There's a, there's stuff, I need to kind of look through all my stuff that's in the car and in the trunk and remember what I actually kept in here versus what's in storage and see what I need to explain, exchange. What actually stuff in here, it should actually be in here. What actually should be in the storage. I'm not 100% sure what I put in the 10 by 10 versus the five by five storage. So I do want to visit both of those in the next day or two. I originally planned on doing client work in the next couple of days. We'll see how I feel when I'm at the library. Yesterday I couldn't, My I was so incredibly tired. I couldn't do, I mean, I paid my bills and that because it was the first of the month, but I didn't really do other financial things or analysis. I do a lot of tracking and I didn't do true client work because my brain was addled not 100 hopefully today i'll be better mentally and because i definitely slept better and i feel better and then i'll be able to do some work today or tomorrow oh my shower went great at planet fitness i actually worked out a very short 15 minutes on the elliptical but something you know the idea was just to get back into it back doing something my thought is is that work I don't, i'm not going to pressure myself to work out every single day at planet fitness but maybe like every other day. Uh, Cause I eventually want to get to a point where I'm doing cardio every day, which may be at Planet Fitness or may just be a 30 minute walk outside. I'd rather actually do a walk outside and then do weights like three days a week, you know, and maybe about every other day. It is incredibly freeing to live in my car. I feel so unburdened. Like I could just go somewhere, you know, I'm not right now because I'm figuring out all this stuff and because I'm dealing with all the storage things, I have more stuff to go through or whatever, but it is, it is very empowering to not be burdened by paying rent and, and by, or, or mortgage for that matter. Um, and to not be burdened by this kind of stuff of a house. Like the fact that all that stuff is gone is, makes me feel really good. There's this interesting thing parked right here where people walk right next to my car. Sometimes they walk right towards my car and then go around it as if I'm wrong for parking in a parking lot. It's so bizarre. And then some people, especially if I'm back here lounging, they'll actually walk up to the car and like, they look at me like, how dare you be here? You homeless person or something. It's very, not most people don't, most people are like doing their own thing. But there's, there's a section of people, multiple people who have just given me this look and I'm just like, I paid for this parking spot, so I get to park here. And you probably didn't because most of the people who walk along this route don't pay to park. They either park for free on the street and walk in the side entrance or they live around here and walk in the side entrance. So I'm just like, I paid for this, dude. Hey, it's Elizabeth off grid and it is the end of day two. A few thoughts. First one is every life has struggle. So it's about picking which struggles you are gonna have. My son moved to the city. And there's all kinds of struggles you have living in the city, you know, buying groceries and, and get buying furniture. And there's things that are uniquely difficult when you live in a city, but there's all kinds of wonderful things too, but you have to kind of enjoy the struggles of your life. That's what's going to make it. So you enjoy your life. It's enjoying the struggles. And I'm not saying you make yourself enjoy the struggles. I'm saying you pick a life where those struggles are the struggles you enjoy. I've always loved camping village camping since I was a kid and camping has all kinds of struggles. And I always hundred percent, not only thought they were worth it, but a lot of the struggles I kind of enjoy. If you hate those struggles, camping ain't going to work for you. And part of what makes a life great are the struggles that you go through and how you overcome them. If everything was even in life, it'd be incredibly boring, unstimulating. There is such thing as too much stress and also such thing as not enough. So I think it's really important to think about that in the life that you pick, where you live, how you structure your life, the relationships, all those things is what struggles are your thing and what struggles are not. One of the wonderful aspects of living in my car that I've already realized is I'm out in the world. So as a introvert, as someone who has multiple anxiety disorders, it's very easy for me to go home and in my apartment or house and feel safe and comfortable there. And by the way, we can do a whole video about the concept of safe and how it's actually not a real thing, but besides that, um, and feel secure and comfortable and end up not talking to anyone, maybe over the internet, 
maybe texting or by a phone, but not actually have interactions with random strangers. So now I get to take my home with me as the same time as I am out in the world. It's like, I'm like a snail. I take my house with me wherever I go. So it means that I can go out into the world on, a, on dozens of little forays and then go back into my little shell and be all comfy and, and eat the food that I want and do the things that I want and do my little hobbies and, and take a little nap. I can take a nap whenever I want, just like a snail or a turtle. It's lovely. And then go back out into the world again. I have all these little interactions now, all these little moments, whether it's at the library, at a store, so many more than I would normally have on a normal day because I'm actually out in the world with people, but taking my house along with me <laughs> as I go. I think that's one of the reasons I do not identify with the concept of being homeless. Part of that, because I actually do own a house, I own a rental house, but besides that, is because this is my home. If I lived on the street, that might be different. Not necessarily, not completely though, because I have interacted with people who are homeless who have a place that they consider their home. But homeless as in living on the street, living on the street. But it makes it easier for me as someone who is introverted and has an anxiety disorder. It's really interesting. So random things that I've learned. I've learned that if you buy something on Amazon, I bought this on Amazon, and have it delivered to a locker, they not, don't necessarily put it in a box. They just like stick one little sticker on it and stick it in the locker. So I don't have to deal with all these boxes. I'm so excited about that. I needed a bunch of things from Amazon. This is a silicone mat. So I can put this on thing like my tray right here, which is wood. I'll show it to you. And then that way I won't burn it when I put have something hot there. And it's also kind of a, it has more friction. So things won't slide around as much on it. And it came in the pack of two and it's purple. So that's on, excellent. I also have realized that there's a whole bunch of stuff. I have no idea where it is. I know I own it. Don't know where it is. I've actually looked for things in both storage rooms and my car and haven't found them. I mean, I believe that they're not lost. I believe I have them. Don't know. They're back down in some bag or box way deep down in some pile somewhere. So there's that. That's something that's going to be through work on. I also realized that I needed to kind of make an entirely new I don't know, to-do list, schedule, planner kind of thing. I've been doing my own planning for a long time. I'm like my own planner. And I actually decided to buy a planner. I just bought it from Amazon. It's coming tomorrow, delivered to the Amazon locker. And I needed to re figure out what are my to-dos and what are my goals and what things am I working on? What stuff do I need? I looked at this month, month of July, and I decided that this week, the, this four weeks in July, right? Full, full weeks. The first week, it, I am going to just be learning, living in a car, um, adjusting how all the stuff is, getting used to cooking and sleeping and, and all the different routines, and finishing the part of the build that I'm going to do, which includes upholstering behind here. So right now, there's just pillows here, and this is a piece of wood, and I want to upholster this. I haven't figured out what I'm doing with these metal pieces, these metal pieces and stuff like that. Yeah, I don't know. I might, I mean, I could like kind of cover them up with some kind of upholstery bin. I don't know, it seems kind of intense. And there's some little bits of things in here to do. I want to do some, put some decoration type things up um, and also do this. This isn't even attached to anything. And I'm gonna have some things on here, some decoration things and also some, maybe a little bit of storage. I don't know, I kind of don't think that a lot of storage can happen on this like I imagine because I'm gonna be moving it to access the trunk and also because there's stuff right here. But I think I could have a little up here, like, like a, the paper towel roll. There's some stuff that I have in here that maybe I don't need in here all the time. Like maybe this could go somewhere else. Or maybe this should actually just be hung up, this light. I don't know. So I'm still adjusting all those things. That's what I want to do is kind of get this space really set with what do I actually need in this space? What could, should I be actually keeping in the trunk? Like this, like do I really need my packing tape? accessible all the time or could that go in the trunk the answer is of course it could go in the trunk so there's going to be some things in here that i don't need ever on a daily basis and as i go throughout this week i'm going to see what things do i actually use on a daily basis and what things do i at least not use in a week week two i'm going to work on the five by five get shelving in there reorganize it take the stuff out of the 10 by 10 that should go in the five by five because that's kind of my you know closet attic garage basement space that I'm going to be using on a regular basis. Week three is starting work on the 10 by 10. 
is something that's going to take me probably months to do. But my idea is I just go out, I go there, I take a box and I go through that box and I just deal with it. When that's done, I go get another box and maybe a box every day. Maybe some days I do two or three boxes. But the idea is that I, I don't want to overwhelm myself. I want to just do it little bits at a time. Week four, I'm going to go on a road trip. I'm going to actually go somewhere. Um, I do plan to have in during the next couple of weeks to like go hiking and do some little things locally. Um, but what I'm saying there is I'm going to go to a, a national forest in California, somewhere that I've been in that area, but haven't really explored the national forest. I've been only to the parks. And so camp for free or at very low cost in the national forest, just actually, you know, being on a trip. I will have to bring different things. And so figuring out what do I need to have on a road trip versus in town. Obviously, I'm going to need to bring more water. I haven't had to buy water because between Planet Fitness, the library, and the park, I just fill up my water multiple times a day at the places I'm at. I haven't needed to get it anywhere else. So that's how I'm looking for this, this first month. I'm getting better and better at not caring about what people think even just in the last few days. Not that I cared a lot about what people think, but things like this, like filming in public, I used to do it a lot. And, and then I haven't done it for a long time. And now I'm back doing it again. And I look like somebody who lives in their car. If someone were looked in the window, there's a bed in here, right? Um, and I'm getting more and more at ease with about not caring. I'm not still 100% at not caring. I still look at people as they go by, but I'm getting better and better at it. Hey y'all, it's Elizabeth off grid and it is day three. I'm having trouble. I'm having trouble because I have a migraine. I woke up uh, in the middle of the night. I got a migraine and then I had more trouble because having a migraine makes me, makes my brain not work. So when I woke up, I woke up at like 4.30 in the morning and I had to pee so bad. I cannot even explain how much I had to pee. And I couldn't find my glasses. They were not my glasses case. I put right here. My glasses case was empty. Like what the heck did I do with my glasses? And I have a pair of backup glasses in, you know, very, I actually have multiple pairs of backup glasses. One of them is in here. One of them is in my glove box. But I don't want to use that. My glasses are expensive because I have a very strong prescription. I did find them. They were sitting on top of my blanket. I guess I took them off to do something and then didn't actually put them away. I forgot that they, they were out. So I found my glasses. I had to pee so bad it was very hard for me because I had... So one of the things is I kind of need to tidy up my situation. That's the, you know, nighttime, bedtime situation before I can leave. At least I need to take the covers off the windows. So that was really hard to do when you have to pee so bad and you're kind of all cramped up like this, which makes it more difficult. I was able to do it. I actually ended up, well, I, I didn't know where my shoes were. So I walked around the car barefoot on the street. I mean, I went and took a shower, so my feet are clean, but thank God there's no glass on the ground. By the time I got to Planet Fitness with the bath, I, I went the wrong way. I mean, it was just ridiculous. Um, got to Planet Fitness, with the bathroom, an incredibly large volume and um, took a shower and washed my hair. And I could not deal with making breakfast. I still have that dealt with making breakfast. If if I had migraine, did not have a migraine right now, I would have, but I couldn't deal with anything. Be well, since the migraine, it's not just the pain, it's that it addles my brain. So everything is harder. It's like I, my processing speed is down as well as like I literally can't remember things. So I'm sniffly right now because I just took my allergy medicine, which in the short term makes me worse. So I ended up going to Starbucks because it was like, by then it was like 5.45 in the morning. Went to Starbucks and got an impossible breakfast sandwich and a um, coconut milk mocha, which is like $11. I'm spending way too much money on food because I'm eating out so much. And I also don't want to be eating out so much, but I have to do what I have to do when I feel terrible. And also when it's so hot. Now it's nice right now. It's like 58 or 59 degrees right now. Absolutely lovely. I run so much hotter now. At 58 degrees, I'm in a, like a little spaghetti strap top. I feel great, which is part of the problem of the heat. It affects me a lot. It's not gonna be as hot today, allegedly, which makes sense because it's starting out in the high 50s. So I'm expecting it to be about 10 degrees cooler, more or less. So instead of it being, you know, 99, being 90 or something like that. So I hope so. Today is a Monday. Um, so libraries are open, places, but 
it's this weird Monday that's in between the weekend and a holiday. So some people will be off work. I'm expecting though that places won't be super busy like parks and, and beach traffic, but we'll see. It's still pretty early, so the park isn't open, but once the park is open, then I'm gonna go to the park. I'm actually just in a random parking lot right now. Oh, in the shade. One of the other things is I don't want shade just because it's warm. I want shade because the sun hurts my head because of the migraine. So wish me luck today. Today and then however long this migraine lasts. My migraines last usually the low end a day and a half, the high end four days. So worst case scenario, this goes through Thursday, but hopefully it's over in a day or two. So wish me luck. I don't want to hear comments about how to stop having migraines because I've had migraines for decades and I've tried everything that there is and I'm not really open for suggestions. However, if you would like to say hi, feel free to do so in the comments. Hey, it's Elizabeth Off Grid. The nearing the end of day three. So today had troubles. I've had a migraine all day. It right now is at a fairly low pain point. I've used my cephaly device twice, once in the morning that kind of brought it down. And then once in the evening brought it down for an hour each time that has made a big difference, which is great. So I said, I'm not a hundred percent with my migraine though. Cause that's not kind of how they work for me, but I'm much better than I was. A couple other things happened. Uh, someone hit my car live in your car the idea of having an accident is a much bigger deal because I, I have to take all my stuff out I have to go stay in a hotel insurance doesn't pay for that stuff so I had a it's a very minor thing and on a 10 year old car that has other debts and many other things that were all my fault once you factor in my deductible and all the drama I don't even know if I'm gonna do anything even remotely about it however I had to deal with the stress of that. It was like someone who just rolled into me in the left turn lane at a light. I was doing nothing wrong. I was literally just sitting there. I do have the guy's information though, if I decide to do anything about it. I don't want to deal with the drama. It's fine, whatever. I doubt that I'm gonna do anything about it, but it was added stress. And I did go to the library this afternoon. I spent the morning until the early afternoon at the park. It was lovely. Went to the library, was able to recharge my small battery, which is back there. Uh, that I use for my CPAP as well. Some actually I've been using it for other things too, because it's so convenient and lightweight and stuff. I actually really like it. Anyway, we charged it at the library. That went really well. No problems. I got a new plug cord for my phone, which wasn't holding a charge. Oh, now it's got a USB-C plug and it's new. Excellent. Charged up super fast. Okay. Cause that was trying to freak me out that my iPhone wouldn't charge. Cause that's not just my phone even though that's very important. It's also my hotspot. I don't have another hotspot yet. I might get one, but maybe I won't because the library's internet at all these libraries is so fast. And I can just, and when I use a VPN, obviously, I mean, you need to use a VPN if you're using library internet. I'm using NordVPN. It is very, very fast. And you can get a coupon codes off of all these different YouTubers who they sponsor. So it's not expensive at all. I paid for like two years up front. And I don't know, I paid like $75 or something for like two years up front and I'm done. Anyway, I think they have like a 30 day, day money back guarantee, but I'm very happy so far. Anyway, I was gonna go get ice cream and then I went and it was too busy and my migraine hurt too much. And so I didn't get ice cream. And then I went to Jack in the Box and got a burger, which is not the same as ice cream, but I was really hungry and I have a migraine and I just couldn't deal. Came back to the park and found a spot of shade ate my food, used this Ephelia device, like I was saying, and I am actually doing a lot better now. One of the big things that I've been working on is creating good morning and evening routines. I think this is good for life generally. I've a good morning routine and evening routine. Routines are amazing to make your life better, but I have to redo it all, right? The order of things. It's a, it's a real precise hacking. So what I realized is that I need to get everything done before I park the car for the night. So when I park the car for the night, I literally am just going to bed. I'm not using my cephaly device. I'm not taking my meds. I'm not setting my bed up. None of that. I just put up these two window coverings, go to bed. I might watch something on my phone for a sec, you know, if I am not sleepy yet, but that's it. And that was really important. So that's my new kind of adjustment in the routine. Now I'm going to have to leave here before I'm ready to go to bed because this park closes at sunset people are still here. They're, they're not cooking them out exactly at something, but it closes at dark. Let's just say 
just after sunset. And I don't want to go to bed at, you know, the sunset's at 8.30, let's say dark is at almost nine. I don't want to go to bed at nine because then I'm waking up at freaking three o'clock, 3.30 in the morning. That's, even for me, that's too early. So I want to go to bed at like maybe 10. So now I have to find a place to park in between that. I'll just find a parking lot, whatever. I have my laptop up here. I have my books and notebooks. I can work on chap studying Japanese, studying French. Yes, I'm learning multiple languages at once, which actually is weirdly easier for me because I can compare them. But because French and Japanese have nothing to do with each other. I've also started learning Swahili, but I'm not working on it right now because I'm ramping back up. And so I have my laptop, I can do all kinds of other things. The rest of my stuff is in the trunk. I'm not gonna like edit video or something like that late at night with a migraine. That doesn't make any sense. One of the things I need to pull out of storage sometime is my fiction and nonfiction books, like regular, they're still in my storage. I can't go tomorrow because tomorrow's 4th of July and storage places are closed. I will get back on that eventually. I also installed lights. Look at this. So one of the things that's been in trouble for me is in the middle of the night, I need to find the light. Where did I put the light? Oh no, where's my phone? Da -da -da. So now I have lights permanently attached with little sticker things. I don't know if that will be, I will like them there, but the other thing is I put a fan here. I'm gonna actually leave the front windows cracked as well as the back windows. And, and because I need more air circulation. Um, I actually am thinking, I'm just gonna put up the back and the front window coverings. I have the front one up right now. At night, I put the black side out. And not put up the sides because I actually start getting claustrophobic. Well, I have agoraphobia. I think it's agoraphobia. I have a lot of things. And, but I'm thinking part of it is also, I need a fan blowing in fresh air from the outside. I think that will make a big difference. I have um, three blankets. If for some reason it gets too cold, it's only gonna be in the fifties. Like I like to sleep in a room that's in the sixties. So if it gets down to 58, I'll probably be hundred percent happy. Being too cold at night, I used to get too cold at night. Now I, I've never had the experience of getting too cold at night. Now I'm just like overheated all the time. So it really did turn around and end up being a day that's been okay, considering I have a migraine. I got my new planner. Oh, it's in the back. I'll show it to you later. I got my new planner, a very, 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 very simple planner. It doesn't have a place for appointments because you know what, I don't have appointments anymore. Uh, it's just about different to-do lists and goals and tracking your habits and stuff. So I'm very excited about that. I did meditation today again, did my meditation. I did not take my vitamins, but I have found them. And it's now on my little tracking sheet. Um, I didn't work out. I was planning to work out yesterday, but I felt so terrible in the morning and had a piece of that and had all kinds of troubles. So it didn't happen, but, and also I have a migraine. So we'll see how I am tomorrow. I may wake up with the same migraine again. Um, I might wake up and feel great. And if I feel good enough, I will work out tomorrow. I mean, probably just walk on the treadmill or whatever but the idea is or it might do weights who knows we'll see what I'm in the mood for I just want to start building that habit um, and doing some kind of exercise every day when in the weather turns to being nice again which tomorrow might actually be I want to start walking I'm here at this lovely park almost every day well so far every day and if I park now I wouldn't do it from up here but if I parked a different parking lot I could go on a walk for like literally miles and miles and miles each way like, I don't know, 20 miles. I'm not gonna walk for 20 miles, but I could. So yeah, so things are pro progressing. It's about making little changes every day. And that's what this week is about. This week is about adjusting to living in a car, psychologically, physically, adjusting what's in the car, all that stuff, because it's a big adjustment. And I have to recreate all my systems and routines and everything to make them work in this life. And it's been hard the last couple of days because started out with like the first big heat wave of the year and I have a migraine. It's like, but if I can get through this, then it will all be, you know, better from here, right? So let's hopefully tonight will work well with going to bed, pulling up and going straight to sleep and not being claustrophobic and boxed in with the window coverings on the side, just in the front and back, because then that blocks it from the car is going by, their headlights coming in. I know if someone came right up to the car and looked in, they could totally see me, but you know what? That would be creepy as heck. And I'm not gonna have the windows open. I'm just gonna have it, you know, cracks. So they can't like reach in and grab me. And if they do that, then I press the button on my phone or press the button on my keys and set off the alarm and then we're all fine. 
So last night was much better. I, with the, with not having window coverings on three of the windows, this one I did because there was a light coming in. I could have the windows cracked and put the fan on. It was also just cooler generally. I also pretty much just didn't go to my place that I park at until I was like ready to just go back and crawl into bed. So much better. I just like watched a video a little bit, fell asleep. Woke up a couple times during the night, but that might have happened if I was in a house anyway. And then came to Planet Fitness at like a little before six. So perfect. Worked out perfectly. I am nervous about tomorrow because Planet Fitness doesn't open until 6 a.m. Because of the 4th of July holiday, they close, I think, 1 o'clock today and they open tomorrow at 6. So I won't have anywhere to go to the bathroom in the middle of the night. So I'm a little bit nervous about that. And then um, the other thing is today I'm going to try to cook breakfast. So that might be a thing, but it's overcast, which is glorious. So I don't have to deal with any sun glare or anything on me. So such a big difference. Day four. What a difference a day makes. Oh my goodness. I do not have a migraine today so far. Knock on plastic. So obviously that's much better. I made coffee. I made breakfast in my car. I, when I went to Planet Fitness, I worked out. So today is doing good so far. One of the big things is I'm figuring out kind of my routine, my, my systems for life and how that works in a car. I have different modes of my car. I have a mode for sleeping. I have a mode for cooking. I have a mode for kind of, I don't know, lounging. And transitioning between these modes in, is not stealth. It's me getting stuff in and out of the trunk. And so where am I stealth versus not stealth? The short answer to that is the only place I'm actually stealth is where I park to go to sleep. I think that thing and that that's the most important place because I'm not conscious. So I am not monitoring what's going on. I mean, there's part of my brain, I'm sure that's listening, but that's where I want to be stealth. What I did last night that made a big difference, I think, was I did all my getting ready for bed stuff, not at where I'm sleeping. And so everything I just did at the park or, and then I went after the park closed at sunset, I went to a random parking lot. And that's where I brushed my teeth. That's where I took my meds, you know, all those different things. So by the time when I got to my spot to sleep, I, I had already set up my bed, made my bed, put the pillow in the right place, everything. All I had to do was put up the window covers and go to bed, you know, put my CPAP on, get back there. Yeah, that's it. And then I moved this basket to here. This basket always stays inside of the car. It is my, where I throw all kinds of random stuff basket. I highly recommend that. It's like a, it's kind of like a junk drawer, except it's a basket. And this is where all the random stuff goes in. So they are, it's not flying around the car and getting on the floor of the car, going in between places. That was helpful for going to bed, like literally just falling asleep because I didn't like have to do a bunch of stuff that was stressful and hard to do in a confined space. And it was also helpful because I got there later. So like I just pulled up, put up window coverings, went to sleep. So I didn't even turn the light on. I didn't have to do that. Now I do have my new lights and I'm glad I have those there where they'll be very helpful in the winter, but they're not stealth unless the window coverings are on. Even the window coverings are on, they're not on to perfect, you know? So if I have light in the car, I'm not being stealth anymore. I do like watch something on my phone before I go to sleep or look at my phone before I go to sleep, but that's it. And then the morning, once I realized I it was light, like I looked outside and it was light, which I could see because there wasn't a window covering on the window next to me. Then I was like, okay, I'm ready to go. It was, you know, 5.30, 5.45. All I had to do was put on my sweatshirt and scoot over to here, move this basket from here to there and go. It was super fast and easy. That was very helpful because it reduced my stress getting to the gym. Then once I got to the gym, then my bag was already made up because that's another part of my thing. I do make up my bag for the gym the night before when I'm at the park still because that takes a whole lot of hassle of getting clothes out of what am I going to wear the next day, blah, blah, blah. I have that completely ready to go. So when I get to the gym, I just have to go in the trunk, grab my bag, and I go in. I worked out this morning, which was great. And that was the same thing. I had my workout clothes ready, so I changed, which I changed it to at the gym. I'm no longer planning on changing clothes inside the car unless I don't have any other option. It is very difficult to do, very awkward, and I don't like it. Now, one thing that I do want to add to my list is I want to get one of those, uh, people get those tents for changing. I think they have them for originally for changing at the beach and people use it for going to the bathroom and much other things. I actually want to get one of those, not for when I'm living in the city, but for when I'm traveling and when I'm like camping in remote places and stuff, because 
I'm not comfortable being naked or in a vulnerable position when I'm outside my vehicle and I don't want to change inside here. So my thought is that will be very helpful out there. And that will be something I want to get for when I'm traveling. I don't need it here. I mean, that would be weird. So today is 4th of July. I don't know how busy this park is going to get. They're enforcing parking regulations here today. I actually saw them driving around and like with the little like vehicle where they check that everyone has actually paid for, for, um, admission here. So they, I'm, I'm imagining they're thinking it's going to get busy and I would imagine it would be getting busy. It's not busy right now at all, but I mean, it's like 830 in the morning, so I wouldn't necessarily expect it. So we shall see how get busy it gets. Libraries are closed today. If this gets busy and or I don't, don't feel like being here anymore. My next, my plan for this afternoon is to go to a shopping center lot. This is a shopping center that has many, many, many different places in it. And it has an inside where it has a bathroom. No one cares if you hang out there. The lot, it's actually an overbuilt parking lot. So it's way more spots than they ever need. It's not even full at Christmas time kind of shopping season. So um, no one would care. And a lot of people who are, you know, delivery drivers and stuff use it as a random place to park. That is my um, plan if I get sick of being in the park. I could literally just stay here all day long too. As I've said, my plan for this week is to just get all my routines in order. Um... One of the things I also realized, uh, one of the things I realized was my big battery, which is what I use to cook with. And I only use 10% of the battery to make breakfast. And that was heating up hot water for coffee and cooking eggs. So that's great. So that means that battery would last more than a week if that's all I did was cook breakfast, which is a really important thing to me to think about is when I'm traveling, am I going to completely switch over to propane? Am I going to also use, still use my electric? I don't know. But that would, means that battery would last for a week or more than a week. Um, switch to just, if I was just doing breakfast. But of course, if I was also heating up other meals or making other meals, that would be different. So that's a really good calculation. And also, I originally had planned on having the battery actually stay in the trunk and me to connect to it through the pass-through. And that does not work, partially because I do my cooking up here. And also because going through the pass-through is an incredible hassle. It, 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 and the battery, I can't pull through it. It's not big enough. It, it technically is a big enough hole, but there's other stuff there. So that just doesn't work. So, the, so that will be part of the transition. Whenever I want to cook food, I have to get all that stuff out of the trunk. And that's fine because I'm getting other things out of the trunk. But I have to put that into my consideration of transitioning things and for what else I eat during the day, etc. So update on day four. I have really had a nice lovely day. I've been here at the park the entire day. It's been really neat seeing this is July 4th. There's tons of people here, families, friends, you know, it's kind of been fun to watch kids playing and people just generally enjoying spending time together. I've been super productive. I've gotten a bunch of work related things done and personal admin stuff done. I did studying for Japanese and I did studying for French. For French, I'm actually at the point now at a, as a high beginner, intermediate person, actually makes sense to just immerse. So I've been doing reading stuff. For Japanese, I'm studying hiragana. Still, <laughs> I'm terrible at memorizing. Like seriously, I was never good at memorizing. And now I actually would say I have some, probably some kind of disability at it. So it is very difficult for me to be learning a script, but I'll get it eventually. I'm getting it slowly, very slowly. Online, you'll see people say, oh, it you can memorize hiragana in two weeks or you memorize hiragana in two days. And it's like months, but not focusing on it a day, every day by, by any means because of all the COVID moving, blah, blah, blah stuff. And yeah, just did nice things, meditated, chilled out, watched some YouTube videos, talked on the phone. I mean, it was, it was nice. It was, felt very kind of normal and lovely. So I decided that tomorrow, which is a Wednesday, is gonna be a day for me to go hiking. I wanna actually start doing the things that's like the main reason for me living in a car, which is traveling. So I'm not gonna do big travel for a little while, and I'm not even gonna do really small travel for a while, for a few weeks, but I wanted to start doing stuff. So tomorrow I'm gonna drive and go hiking, um, like early in the morning, so it won't, so it'll still be really cool. And I think that will be very nice. I have my backpack and my hiking poles in the car. So that's already ready to go. And that actually will be the thing that I do early in the morning. If I'm up really early in the morning before Planet Fitness is open, I'll just start driving to where the hiking is. And there's a couple Walmarts on the way. I can stop 
they'll be open at 6 a.m. I can stop and go to the bathroom there and I don't need to take a shower before I hike. And then once I go hiking and everything, I can come back and take a shower. Hey, it's Elizabeth Off Grid, day five. And I am actually out in nature with my car, of course. So I decided that today I was gonna go hiking because I wanted to do the things that I actually am doing this whole thing for, you know, and start doing that. So today I came to a park that I've been to many times I enjoy very much. I know the route to get here. There's rarely a lot of people here. And right now is apparently zero people here, though I'm sure there'll be people who will come a little later today. It's a weekday, so it makes sense that it's that, that busy. But let me tell you about last night. So last night was the night of 4th of July. First, there's fireworks going off everywhere. Someone was actually setting, people were setting off fireworks in the middle of the street and the median. I'm like, are you? I, I'm amazed by people's lack of sane logic. I knew that last night, Planet Fitness was not open. They were st closed at 1 p.m. on on the holiday and then weren't reopening until today at 6 a.m. So they're open now. And so I wasn't going to have anywhere to go to the bathroom in the middle of the night or when I woke up at 5, 4 5 o'clock in the morning and I was stressed about that. I have a lot of anxiety about not being able to find a place to go to the bathroom. It's like a thing. So I was like, I'm going to go to Walmart because it's open until 11 p.m and go at like 10 something. So that way I can go to the bathroom kind of later than I normally do, which is like 8.15 at the park. So I did that. It was absolute madness because of people setting off fireworks in the literal freaking street. And also the official fireworks going off and you could see them from places. So people were like congregated on the sides of roads. It was really neat to kind of to see fireworks randomly and like official fireworks that were beautiful, but it was actually very stressful and loud. I did go to the bathroom at Walmart. I bought a couple things that I actually wanted that only Walmart carries. They carry kind of different things um, than other grocery stores and super cheap, which is also helpful. And then came back and did my normal getting ready for bed stuff and went to bed. I had some trouble sleeping because of that anxiety. Like, oh my God, what if I need to pee in the middle of the night? I mean, it was just ridiculous, which of course made me need to pee. So I wake up at 4.30 a.m., which normally would be no problem to wake up that early. I normally wake up between 4.30 and 5.30 and then go naturally, no alarm, and go to the Planet Fitness. But of course, they're not open until 6 and nothing really was open until 6. And I was like, let me go see if the park is. They had the park, they actually locked the bathroom doors so and never tried them in the middle of the night. So there's a park that is like right by where my old apartment complex. And yes, the bathroom doors are locked at night. And it's so fairly ridiculous that we get upset about homeless people peeing every everywhere, going to the bathroom everywhere, if we don't have any bathrooms for them to go in. And I'm assuming the reason we don't is because people are like, well, if you have bathrooms, then homeless people would all congregate in those places. But I would say that's actually a prisoner's dilemma issue. And that really, if every city in town had bathrooms, it wouldn't change whether homeless people are distributing themselves at all. The problem is, is just if some of them do. But that's a problem for another day. Anyway, I ended up finding a place to park and literally going in behind my car and peeing on the ground. It was the place I was parking was totally legal for me to be parking at that moment because there's no parking between three and five. It wasn't like in front of anyone's house. It was literally, there was like some bushes and trees and a fence and then the interstate. Like, so no one was going to notice or care or anything like that unless a cop can't happen to be patrolling down that road, which is a really weird dead end road. But so, uh, but I could see very far in both directions, which also means someone can see me. But I peed and it was fine. I have no problem peeing outside. I go hiking and backpacking and camping. I go to the bathroom outside all the time. I don't really want to do it in a city. It's also probably illegal. So don't want to have to, don't want to, have to do that very often. But anyway, I'm okay now. I am here in the parking lot of where I'm going to go for a hike. And I'm very happy about that. And so now I'm going to do my normal rearranging stuff for daytime, which I haven't done yet. I haven't made my bed or anything. And <clears throat> putting the stuff away that should be in the trunk. And then putting my backpack together, packing myself a sandwich for lunch, etc. And then I'll go out and enjoy my nice hike. It's, it's a lovely overcast day, so it's not going to be hot until this blows off. So Hey, it's Elizabeth off grid. I am on, not the top of a mountain <laughs> or a bridge. I'm about halfway up 
but I'm at a picnic table, which is lovely. I have hiked here before many years ago, maybe 10 years ago, and haven't hiked up to this point since I don't think. One of the things that's been really neat since I was diagnosed with diabetes is once I got my blood sugar under control, I'm, my A1C is 6.3 for those of you who know what that means. I have so much more ability to do stuff and like energetic things like being able to hike. It's like how I used to be. It's taken years <laughs> off, of, off of my cardiovascular. So, so that is just wonderful because this is the kind of stuff I love to do. I started this hike at 6.45 in the morning. So I've been going for over an hour. I've only gone 1.3 miles on this trail. Well, a little bit farther because I had to walk on a trail to get to this trail. But I'm an incredibly slow hiker. Incredibly slow. Partly because I stopped to take pictures and videos, but partly because I just stop and listen and look at things. And I go slowly and I kind of plod along. And that's, I think, an important thing is to let yourself go the speed that's the right speed for you. Everything doesn't need to be a race. Everything doesn't need to be completed. Some things are just, you know, you experience them in the moment. It's a Wednesday and I'm out here hiking in the morning. And there's a whole lot of people who are at some job. And while it is true that I definitely have lots of privileges that made me get to this place in my life easier, you know, being white, being a U.S. citizen, having English as my native speaking language. My parents are still married to each other, which is highly unusual nowadays. Middle class, more like working class middle class, but we never were hungry or, you know, anything like that. Um, I have many college or university degrees. Um, so I have all kinds of different privileges, right? But the truth is, is that, and I acknowledge that those things help made it, make it easier for me to do something like this. Because like, for example, as a lawyer, as a lawyer, I can set up a practice of law that is very alternative and you get paid well for it, even though I work a very few number of hours. It's just as one simple example. But there's still a lot of awkwardness and struggle that I have in this life of living in a car. But the thing is, every life has its struggles. And, then, and the secret is to pick which struggle you want, to opt into that struggle, to make that struggle be a choice. There's going to be suffering and complexity and difficulty in every single kind of life. Which one, which suffering, which complexity, which difficulty do you want? Now, some things you're not going to get to choose, and those are the things that are about privilege, you know. The, the things that affect me, the things that affect you that were not your choice, right? Those are things that the difficulties and sufferings, you know, are, are something that are happening to you. However, there's a whole bunch of parts of life that you do choose. And so making conscious choices about those things make everything better. One of the biggest, biggest difficulties is dealing with everybody else, especially people in your life who aren't making those choices. It was a struggle this morning because I had to go find a place to go to the bathroom and I literally peed on the side of a small road <laughs> peak you know homelessness right at that moment but but here I am hiking on a Wednesday morning so you have to pick which struggles you want you have to pick which suffering you want so you can have the overall life that you want and then those struggles those sufferings those challenges because you picked them aren't as bad they're just you know stuff that makes good YouTube video they're not horrible things that are happening to you. We all have some horrible things that are happening to us just because we're human beings on earth and we were born into various different challenges and difficulties. And so don't make the other things a struggle for yourself. You've got enough problems just being a human being who was born how you were born. The rest of life, have that be stuff that you pick. Hey, it is Elizabeth Off Grid. It is nearing the end of the fifth day living in my car. Overall, it was so great to go hiking. I enjoyed that so much. Went out for a nice two and a half hour hike. My legs are sore. I mean, I'm tired from it because it's the first time kind of back. Especially since I had COVID and everything, I really kind of got out of practice for even walking. You know, I used to walk every day. So um, I'm out of the loop. But it's good to get back at doing those things. And also it's just good to be out at the crack of dawn in nature. So a number of other good things today. I went through everything in the car and pulled out what I actually don't need in the car and put more stuff into storage. I really want to make it such that the inside of this car only has what I'm going to be using in that particular mode. Like I have stuff that I need in the car for bedtime sleeping mode. I have stuff I need in the car for cooking. Um, I have stuff I need in the car for you know working and, and lounging. 
And the other times, the, the everything else stays in the trunk. It's better from a safety perspective, so people don't look in my car and see all these batteries and laptops and stuff like that. But it's also better from the perspective of having more space. You know, last night when I was sleeping, I felt very cramped by stuff that was kind of like almost falling on top of me. Like that's just not good. Also, when I was cooking breakfast yesterday, it was very frustrating. I had to move stuff to get to the stuff that I needed. So I, another thing that I did today was I rearranged the drawers over here. So it's most used, medium amount of use, least used. Now the least used stuff for right now I'm keeping in here because I think I will use it sometime. Like I, it is not, it's, I haven't used it yet. doesn't mean that I won't use it. I'm thinking I will. The other thing I changed, I don't think you can see it in here right now. One thing I changed was I got a soft cooler, a very small soft cooler for vegetables and fruits and other things like um, mustard, soy sauce, things that don't ex really need to be on ice, especially if they're consumed fairly quickly and kept from getting overheated, but they need to be kept from getting crushed. I may also put the bread in there. I may put tortillas whenever I buy tortillas. The thing is, I really am going grocery shopping every two days. Like I buy food and then I cook it and eat it. The thing is I have to buy ice every two days right now so far. And so it doesn't really make sense to try to store a whole bunch of stuff when I'm just going to eat it up. Something like veggies, they'll stay good for two days, most vegetables, you know. It doesn't need to be consumed super fast. It doesn't need to be on ice. On ice, I will have meats. I will have any sort of uh, dairy products. And I will have leftovers. You know, so I actually have some leftover rice in there because it's not good to keep it room temperature. When I, and I kind of um, parsed out the stuff that I use so they're in different groups. So like I have all the cleaning stuff together. I have all the cooking breakfast stuff and making coffee and then cooking other meals. Like I, I've separated out those things. So hopefully I can make it faster. Also, one great thing I did today was I cooked food in the park, not in the car. Like I took it, I went to a different park than I am at right now, actually. And there was a picnic table. I brought everything over the picnic table, including my big battery. And I made a nice, a nice rice, a nice um, fried rice with an egg. I really was craving vegetables. I felt, I was starting to feel like, un like just feeling terrible. I really needed some vegetables and I already eat one salad a day. I didn't want another salad. So I wanted, I thought a stir fry would be the easiest thing. I actually bought frozen vegetables because I wanted a whole bunch of veg different vegetables. And really that's the best way to kind of get a mix of vegetables is to buy it frozen. I cooked half of it. I'm going to see how it does overnight. If it, the texture is kind of ruined by it being like, I put it in the cooler so hopefully it'll stay really cold and not kind of become disgusting whenever I cook it tomorrow. But we'll see. I mean, that would be actually really nice to be able to buy frozen vegetables, assuming I eat them that day or the next day. It may work. I'm having to rethink a whole lot of the things that I was planning in the sense of what I thought, what stuff I thought was going to be useful, how um, my routines would be and, and how I would be doing things to end up being very different than what I thought, which is always how it is when you're doing something brand new, right? So you can't really think your way into it. You have to experience your way into it. It does mean that I'm having to change a lot of things. That's taking a lot of time and energy to do. Tonight, I am thinking that I might spend the night somewhere else. I feel like, you know, spending, let's see, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday night, five nights in one place may be pushing it. I think moving to a new spot would be a good idea just so I don't look like I'm always there, you know, and then be in a new spot for a while. Then like maybe if I have, you know, three or four spots and I can then kind of rotate through and no one will ever notice. It might even be nice to have spots that are, you know, Monday I go here, Tuesday I go here kind of thing just to make it easy on myself to remember what I'm doing. So we'll see how that goes. I have a couple ideas. I have a spot that I'm planning to do, but then I have a couple ideas for other spots for the future. It's difficult to know what's going to be good in the evening when you're driving around during the day. When I was at the park, a different park than this one that I'm at right now, there were people there who I believe were living in their vehicles. Um, a couple, like a van, an RV, with a number of people in cars. I think that park 
is a place where some people hang out because they rarely charge the parking fee and there's a bathroom and it's not really that busy of a place. So I think a lot of people are hanging out there. Tomorrow, my plan is to do some work either at a park, at the library. I don't know. We'll see how that goes. Um, it's a weekday. I'm also going to need to buy ice and some more food. It's very different. I buy food almost every day. It's like I live in old fashioned times when people used to buy their food that day because they didn't have refrigeration. Hey, it's Elizabeth Off Grid, day six of living in my car. And I'm really starting to feel like I am figuring things out. Slept much better last night. I where I parked my car was in a place that was very bright. I put up all the window shades. Didn't feel claustrophobic because there was light coming in through the little edges, which weirdly was better for me. I don't know what to tell you about that, but worked. Also, the street I was on, that spot was a little bit wider. So when cars went by, they didn't shake my car and make me feel like an earthquake was happening or they were going to crash into me. So I felt much safer from that. Overall, it's a much better place to park. I still am looking for some new places. I want to actually have a couple places that are really close to Planet Fitness. So I don't have to keep driving back and forth to Planet Fitness. It's like five miles from where I'm at right this second, for example. And so that's a lot of driving. I don't care about the time, to be honest, because I have so much more time now that I'm not living. It's interesting. I have so much more time now that I'm not living in an apartment. I don't exactly know why. I think is it because I actually have more time in the sense of having an apartment required extra time. I think it's that I perceive I have more time because I'm already out and out in the world. I have a lot of time where I'm out in nature. It just feels much more expansive. I, I don't know. It's really interesting. Uh, I had I, and I couldn't scope them out yesterday or last night because it was dark and I have to be able to read the signs, the parking signs to see if it has, if it's just, you know, you can't park here a certain night of the week because of street cleaning or if it actually has rules. So I found two other places to park and that are over by there. And so I can kind of, now I'm starting to collect places to park. So I don't have to park the same place every night, which eventually creates a problem. Also, the other thing I did was I went to Planet Fitness last night at 9, 30, 10 o'clock and went to the bathroom, brushed my teeth and everything there. The reason I did that was actually because here at the park, they shut the bathroom, they lock the bathrooms before closing. So typically this park technically closes at sunset where they close the entrance and then they kind of go around and make people leave, but they don't do it usually in a certain, in a very intense way. However, the person who was working yesterday was very intense. She came and locked the bathrooms like 15 minutes before sunset. And I was, and I was literally walking to the bathroom and she looked at me and she locked the door. I was like, damn woman, that is harsh. You got 15 minutes, you know? So I didn't get to do all the things I would normally do. And I had to, you know, so there was really no option. It was really good to go to the bathroom, brush my teeth at Planet Fitness in the evening, because then I, right before I went to bed, because then I wasn't worried about it, you know, wasn't having to hold it unreasonably amount of time. It was the first time I went to Planet Fitness twice in one day, and they do not care or even notice the difference, especially because in the evenings, it is a zoo. Like, so Planet Fitness has a thing where teenagers get a free membership for the summer, which is actually really neat from a physical perspective for them to work out and what have you. And also for, as a, just literally a place to go that's safe and positive. It was packed with teenagers. It was like being at a club, a teenager club. So there's no drinking or anything. I mean, teenagers were coming in groups of like a car full of teenagers all going in there. It was really interesting and odd to be in a space like that as a 48 year old. But it meant that no one cared what I was doing. They were all thinking teenager thoughts, not about me. And the people working there were busy dealing with it, with all the people in there. So me coming in and flossing and brushing my teeth and going to the bathroom and stuff, no one cared. Uh, one thing I do want to do is I need to dig out my gum, my water pick thing for my gums because I haven't been using it and I want to get back into that and I'm going to do it in the evenings. And I think no one will care because you know what? They're all busy. Got some ice at 7-Eleven. I'm figuring out the prices for ice. 7-Eleven here sells seven pounds of ice for $4. 
Safeway and CVS sell nine pounds of ice for five dollars. That's technically a tiny bit cheaper, but seven pounds a lot of times is actually the right amount. And the nine pounds end up throwing out some of it. So uh, I'm though hunting for better prices. I think this area is a bad place to buy ice because I would imagine everything's to be overpriced because other things are overpriced. So I'm going to look in other places, but, um, and eat, cause I have to get ice every other day. Spending four or $5 every other day is like going to be a chunk of my budget. You know what I'm saying? However, I've not had to buy water. I have not had to buy propane because I'm not using any propane yet. So there's some things that were in my budget that I haven't needed to do at all. I am spending going to spend more money on gas because I didn't plan that I didn't factor in that while I was in town, I actually still will do a lot of driving. I think right now I'm doing a lot of extra driving because I'm driving because I don't know really know where I'm going in the sense of like what good places are for me to hang out. And so I go to extra places during the day. Uh, and also when it was really hot, I went to different places than I might on a day like this. This is, it is beautiful. I could stay here all day, except for a problem. I went over to the bathroom and the toilet wouldn't flush and it wasn't because the toilet was broken. It's because the water is off to that bathroom. So next time I need to go to the bathroom, I'm going to, <clears throat> which won't be for a little while. Thank goodness. I'm going to go over to one of the other bathrooms here and see if they're open. If they're not, then I'll just go to the library earlier than I thought I was going to. But that does mean that this isn't a place for me to go to the bathroom during the day. Um, so my backup places are besides like stores, like, Target and Walmart and Home Depot and what have you, my main place would be go to the bathroom would be the library. Uh, libraries here are open until like six or seven o'clock, depending upon the day, depending upon the library. So if that, if these bathrooms are not working, it could just be that this one is off and that the other, there's like four other bathrooms here. This is a very big park. So what am I doing today? Uh, I'm, you know, looking at my new little planner. My things were buy ice, which I already did. I did that at seven o'clock in the morning at 7-Eleven before I even started making breakfast and then do work. So here in the car, before the library opens, I'm going to do some kind of personal work, like financial tracking, all that stuff. Oh, I'm going to make sure I take my vitamins today and meditate. I didn't do any of that stuff yesterday. And then I'm going to do work at the library today. I want to really be productive in a work way. The new app from Facebook Meta, uh, launch day threads. And I got on that this morning, last night, whenever it was, I actually am thinking about making that be for my, not for really this. I might not really use it for this brand. I really am liking Instagram for this brand. I'm actually thinking that for my Elizabeth PW personal brand, for lack of a better word, i actually may use it for that because it, I miss Twitter and stopped using Twitter a long time ago. And I may use it to post things that I would have posted on Twitter or I would have posted on that Instagram accounts, um, things that are more political or opinionated or whatever. But I am on there as Elizabeth off grid, kind of saving it as a placeholder in case I decide to really use it. Again, this is Elizabeth off grid, yet another video about that first week living in my car. Comment, like, subscribe, all the things. Talk to you next time. Bye-bye.